Have you ever shocked someone with static electricity by rubbing your socks on the carpet, touching them, and watching them recoil? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create what's called a Leyden jar to store an even more powerful buildup of static charges so that when it's touched, it releases an impressive amount of Zeus's wrath. Woo! That was more than I was expecting. Well, there goes the light bulb. Speaking of light bulbs, uh, later in the video, we're gonna see if our Leyden jar can hold enough charge to power a light bulb. Now, a Leyden jar is like an early form of a capacitor, which is like a battery, but instead of dispersing its charge slowly, it releases it all at once. The Leyden jar was accidentally discovered in 1745 by a man named Evold G. von Kleist, but a year later was also discovered in the city of Leyden, Netherlands by Peter von Muschenbroek, and his version became more popular and was named after the city and is now called a Leyden jar. It's basically a device that stores static electricity between two electrodes on the outside and inside of a container. When a conductive material bridges the connection between the two, the charges equalize and it creates a static electricity shock. Static electricity occurs simply when electrons jump from one surface with a certain charge to another surface with a different charge. Lightning is one form of static electricity. All right, let's jump right into making this thing. The materials we'll need to make this are a plastic bottle, some aluminum foil, a nail, and some tape. We'll also need a length of PVC pipe, just a couple feet, and a paper towel to generate the static electricity to charge our Leyden jar. My PVC is a little bit too long, but I'm just too lazy to cut it. If you can, choose a bottle with flat sides as it's easier to wrap aluminum foil around as opposed to a bumpy bottle. Empty the bottle of any liquid inside because we'll need to fill it up in a bit with something different. Then remove any label or plastic wrapping from around the bottle. That'll do. After it's removed, measure the length of the flat part of the bottle and subtract a couple inches. This will be important later. Then cut the aluminum foil to that length. After you have it cut, wrap the aluminum foil around the bottle and secure a piece of tape to the end to make sure it stays in place. Also, make sure to leave the top of the bottle exposed where we cut our aluminum foil earlier. Then grab another piece of tape to secure it back into place. Now we have an electrode on the outside of the Leyden jar, time to add one on the inside. To do this, fill the bottle up almost to the top but not quite, leaving about an inch of air. Then add a small portion of salt to increase the conductivity because salt water is way more conductive than pure water. Then screw the cap back on. Now the last step in building our Leyden jar is to drive the nail down through the center of the cap so that the nail touches the water, but is still partially sticking out of the top. Like that. This will allow an electric charge to travel from the nail into the water and from the water back to the nail so we can charge and discharge our jar. Now our Leyden jar is complete. It will hold a charge for a period of time unless a conductive material connects the foil to the nail. Now we have to charge our Leyden jar up using static electricity, which we can easily and consistently generate using the PVC pipe and paper towel. To do this, wrap the paper towel around the PVC pipe and rapidly run the paper towel up and down the length of the PVC, which will build up a static electricity charge. If you do it correctly, you should be able to hear the crackle of static electricity being created. After doing this, pass the PVC along the nail to transfer the static electricity into our jar. Make sure to hold your hand around the aluminum foil while doing this to neutralize any potential charge in the foil. This makes it so that any charge being built up in the aluminum foil is constantly discharged through your hand. If you don't do this, the charge in the aluminum foil would be similar to the charge in the nail, and the Leyden jar wouldn't work because remember, static electricity moves between differently charged surfaces. The reason in cutting the aluminum foil a couple inches shorter than the bottle earlier is to prevent the charge from the PVC pipe jumping to the aluminum foil instead of the nail, which is what makes the foil and the nail the same charge. I found a more efficient way to charge the Leyden jar using the PVC and paper towel, where you use one hand to hold the towel in place a couple inches from the nail, and use the other hand to slide the PVC back and forth so the PVC passes right along the nail. However, remember that the charge in the aluminum foil needs to be constantly neutralized, 
And in the first method, we used one hand holding the bottle to do this. But with this method, since both of our hands are occupied, have someone else hold the bottle while touching you, which will do the same thing as if you were holding the bottle. If you don't have someone to help you, you can alternatively kneel and do this while holding the bottle between your knees. Repeat this to your heart's content, but beware, the more you do this, the more electricity is stored and ready to be released. Therefore, the bigger the shock. When you're done, hold the bottle around the aluminum foil and touch your finger to the nail. You should feel the static electricity that was being stored in the Leyden jar jump into your finger and if the charge was big enough, you might even feel it pass through your whole body as it travels to the aluminum foil. One of my favorite things to do is get a whole group of people and have them form a circle holding hands with the person at one end holding the bottle around the aluminum foil, then the person at the other end touches the nail, creating a circuit through everyone that you can feel. Now let's try touching the nail in the dark to see if we can see a spark jump from the nail to my finger and to see if we can store enough charge in our Leyden jar to power a light bulb. I'm gonna film this section of the video in 60 frames per second because some of the stuff we're gonna do is gonna happen in an instant and this will give us a better chance of catching it on video. Okay, so we've charged the Leyden jar with about 10 or so passes and we're gonna see if we can see the spark jump to my finger. We also have this wire we can use to connect the aluminum foil to the nail which will be a little bit easier to see a spark with. That was a small one. Now we've charged it with about 30 passes and I'm going to be using the wire this time because it's going to be a pretty powerful shock. Oh, this is crazy. While we were doing this, we noticed that this Bluetooth speaker we left laying around lit up when we discharged the Leyden jar. Watch, replay the footage. Oh, now let's try a small light. I'll just steal one from my Christmas tree. Hope no one notices. After about another 10 passes, I'm gonna use one hand to hold the bottle and put one finger of my other hand on one of the light's wires and then I should be able to just touch the other wire to the nail. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna try the light bulb and it might need a lot of electricity, so I'm not gonna connect it using my fingers anymore. I'll use the wire from before. All right, so the Leyden jar is charged with about 30 passes, so we can connect the light bulb. You can see a small circle at the very bottom of the light bulb, which we place on the nail, and then we can connect the threaded metal above to the aluminum foil using the wire from before. A little bit of light there. Wow. It's ironic that we're using a water bottle to power a light bulb. Let me know in the comment section below what you think we should do with this Leyden jar, and also let me know if you successfully built your own. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe for more.